Hey guys, so I want to go ahead and talk about something that's really been kind of bugging me because I think it misleads a lot of beginners when it comes to 3D modeling. And it's what is the right way of 3D modeling, right? Like, is it subdivision? Is it Boolean ingon? Or what? what is it? Well, here's the problem. All these different workflows you hear about, Boolean ingon, subdivision, standard modeling, whatever, it's all just modeling at the end of the day. They're just techniques you can use to generate a result. There's no right, there's no wrong. There's some ways that might be more efficient or less efficient, depending on what you're working on. Some are faster, some are slower, some deliver better results, perhaps. Some can do things that other things can't do. But there's reasons why you might choose one way of working over another, depending on your project. That's really what it comes down to. So I just want to use this cube as a simple example, all right? This is, let's say we're making a game model out of this cube and we need a bevel on it, right? How many different ways can we generate a bevel? Well, first, we just add a bevel modifier, shaded auto smooth, boom. We can literally take the normals of this cube and bake it to this cube, right? High poly, low poly, that simple in respect to a cube anyways. So is that the only way of doing things? No, absolutely not. We could use that same model and we can, Add a remesh modifier to this, okay? And we set it to smooth shading. And we crank down the count here until we got a nice dense mesh. Something like that. Then what we're going to do is add a smooth corrective. Only smooth it. Change the repeat amount to whatever you need it to be to get a nice bevel on it. Okay? And then to optimize it, if you're going to bake it later on, you might decimate it. Nope, decimate And you might decimate it however much you need to, okay? And maybe you apply all that later on. Who knows? Perhaps. That's all you do. You can bake that to that. No problem. You take this here. You want to run it through quad remesher and subdivide it. You could, That's another way of creating a high poly, right? You want to manually create quads and do another subdivision that's more efficient perhaps that's another way of doing it you see where this is going this is why when you hear these guys talking about you should do things the right way with subdivision or you should just use boolean ingon because screw topology they're all wrong everybody that says that kind of stuff they're wrong you use both all of these at any time you know you might even decide like later on that, you know, working with Boolean Ingon might be the better option. I don't know why that one disappeared. Anyways, uh, you might want to work with Boolean Ingon later on. You might need to make a subdivision base that you can Boolean up so that you can remesh it to cr create the topology you need or the high poly that you need to bake it to a low poly. It goes high poly first, low poly second, generally speaking. That's the way it should go because you can always build like a low poly cage around the objects you create. And as long as you're not shooting ray misses during a normal map bake, guess what? It's valid. So when we look at even something like a low poly by itself, remember when it comes to environment art, you might be using seamless textures. You might be doing material blending, right? Trim sheets, things like that. So even if you're doing other types of low poly models, sometimes it doesn't even pay off to do the whole high poly model because it takes too long and you might just be better off painting your height map or normal maps. You could literally take something like this, for example, I've already got it unwrapped, and we could use something like text tools just because it's easy and quick. Crank up the value here, and maybe knock this one down a little. And we can set the resolution we want. And anti-alias it. Hit bake. It's going to generate a normal map using the bevel shader, basically. Okay? Anytime you have a sharp edge, you need a seam on it. You need to break up the UV islands. Okay? That's the rule of thumb. It's very simple. Now, if you have a seam and it's on a uh, curve, you don't need a sharp. So you need to mark sharps on the sharp edges and then put a seam on it. Uh, so this normal, we do a normal map, and we do a um, do an image texture and load up that 
normal map, but a material preview. Okay, it's not as pretty. It's a little. It's actually a lot tighter this uh, bevel, but anyways, it's there. You'll see it more with the uh, metallic on. Let's do that. Okay. So yeah, we got a normal map bake or bevel shader bake. Anyways, you can create a bevel shader bake, and then you can hand paint a height map, and you can mix them together in something like Photoshop. Not even a joke. Uh, so, for example. You wanted to take, let's just use this one for example. Go to shading. We're going to remove this because we're not using it right now. We'll do a texture, image texture. We'll do a vector bump node. Plug it into normal. Plug this into height. Create a new 32 bit float. Do 1024 for now. We can go to texture paint, right? It's a black image. If we go to white, it's a displacement map, more or less. We can literally paint height maps here inside of Blender. You can do this in Krita too. You can do it in Photoshop. This is another workflow technique that doesn't even involve doing a high poly. Okay, this is a little bit older, but it used to be done a lot more. And it's rather interesting, in my opinion. So think about that for a second. A simple cube, how far can we push it, right? We can still do floaters on top of these things as well. I mean, is the, the techniques, they just go on, it seems like, forever and a day. Different workflows, too. And it depends on what you're making. Environment art, you won't, you may do some stuff like that, perhaps. You might do highs to lows. You might mix it all up. You might do trims and seamless. Usually environment art, you, you use everything under the sun. That's one of the more complicated things to do is finish a proper AAA environment. Okay. Anyways, I wanted to get this off my chest. So when you hear anything like that, just take it with a grain of salt. All right. It's going to confuse a lot of guys very badly. And it's just not, it's not helping them become better 3D modelers. And it's, it's a bunch of nonsense, really. Anyway, so that's it for this video. I just wanted to get that off my chest and hope it helps you in some way, all right? So I'll check you out in the next video. Take care, all right?